Take away this thorn, throw both out. So the equipment has to be out of what is available. So when everything is Maya, well, you have to choose the best equipment from Maya and that becomes our sadhana. And so the technique may not be the truth, but the technique leads us to the truth. So we said, go on eliminating, negating everything. This is not Atman, this is not Atman, this is not Atman, this is not Atman. Everything has been exhausted. When you come to the irreducible minimum of the cell, the cells alone remain, which you cannot deny. Right. From multiplicity, we have reduced the location of the Atman to one place. But your problem is not solved. Because this eye is not visible, naturally the question arises, what do you mean by that self which remains? What remains? You mean this body? How can it be the Atman? You are saying that Atman is Avinashi. It is indestructible. It is not subject to decay. It is not subject to old age. While my body is all to the contrary. So it can't be. So which do you mean? Because when I say I, the location from multifariousness, it has come to this location. But again, unfortunately, it is not free from doubt because when you say I, do I mean the body? Or do I mean that bio-force, that vital breeze called a prana, but for which we will not be able to move a little finger? Is that, or is it that famous mind? Because it is the mind which conceives everything, including God it conceives. It is the mind which conceives. So, is it, is it what do you mean by I? Am I the mind? Or am I the determinative faculty called the buddhi or the intellect? Am I the intellect? Thus, a number of clouds arise even though the location has now been reduced from the entire world to a small area. Unfortunately, this is not so small as we assume. When we go into it, we find it presents one of the greatest of bugbears as to who am I. <laughs> Very easy to say the self that is there. Which self? Whom do you call a self? Who is that I? So we are coming to the famous Brahmastra of our Bhagavan. <laughs> so he is going to the next step. In the next step, he is going to say, what are all the possible identifications we make, which normally we people consider as the Atman? If you ask somebody, you will say, what do you mean? When I mean I, I mean this figure who is sitting here with a long beard, with white hair, and with a gerva kapra. Well, I am that. Then, if you apply your reasoning and logic, your proper logic, and you think over it, contemplate over it, then perhaps we will be able to eliminate and cross out the stage, no, and not the body. So that, see, the Atman is now hidden with five sheets. That is, we are normally identifying ourselves, the Tadatma Bhava, the identification we are doing with different sheets. First is the gross. The gross sheet is this body, Annamaya Kosha, as you call it, the one which is made of matter. So this is very, very evident like, so obviously we perhaps identify, when I say I, I mean this body. But by proper contemplation we get over it. We go further. No, no, it can't be. Something subtler still it should be. What is it that is subtler still? Pranamaya Kosha. The second one is the bio, the bio force or what is called the vital breeze. It is normally made up of 
the air which we breathe in and out. But then the air when it goes in, all the cosmic energy which is inside it, we are able to absorb and then we are able to eject out the simple air after having taken out its essence out of it. So it is that essence which makes us work. Prana is the maintenance engineer which is looking after all of our cells. It is the most important one. It is because of this prana that we are able to feel hunger and thirst. These are the two qualities, truth and vipasa. Hunger and thirst, these are supposed to be the two qualities of this sheet, pranamaya. Then by proper logic and reasoning you find, no, it can't be. It can't be. Then again, you go beyond it. Thus, you pass through all the five sheets, annamaya, pranamaya or the by force, then manomaya, the sheet of mind. I'll explain these things. Then you go beyond it to the intellectual level known as Vidyanamaya Kosha. Then finally the fifth Kosha is known as the Anandamaya Kosha. It is the sheet of bliss, but not the ultimate bliss, but not the supreme bliss. It is again the sort of a temporary bliss which never remains permanent, but we are very near the law. We are almost able to see yourself. That is the stage. Go beyond it. Then, self alone remains. Who is to go beyond what? Oh, you are that self, that's all. That alone remains. So that is going to describe. You are that tattva. Because it's also going to end. Tattva mati tattva. You are, you are that reality. Tvam. Tattvam, Tati Tattvam Ati, Dvam, the Tattvam, you treat you, you it as Tati and Dvam. So Dvam, you, Tati Tattvam Ati, you are that reality, which reality? That reality which is found by contemplating and meditating on all the five sheets respectively, and then by purifying each sheet and making it transparent, and going beyond it, when all the five things become transparent, you see lie embedded in it, the self echoes themselves, the Swayam Prakasha, which reveals itself to you in all its glory. And that is your real self, and that self for you, you are waking up, not shelter, you are not. So we read it. Khadya Muppadya Vishwa Manupravishya Gudam Annamayabhi Kosha Purajale Kama Yogi Vichya Yukti Abhadhata Taham Yukti Abhadhata Taham Yat Tandula Vakri Abhadhati Tattva Mati Tattva here, in the Sanskrit they have given you the split one. There is one split which has been wrongly done. Yuktya avadhatataha, no. It is yukti plus avadhatataha. It becomes yukti avadhatataha. It is not yuktya, it is simply yukti. Vivicha yukti avadhatataha. That becomes yukti avadhatataha. And uh, he says, Tattvamati Tattvam, you are that reality. What reality? The reality which Khadya Muppadya Kham means Akasha. That is the things. When the Lord created this world, out of his imagination. What is the first thing he created? See, the entire thing is only meant for a common man. The God is not a potter who sits and who takes 25 days to complete it, even though the Bible and our own Genesis, known as Sutta, our own Upanishad, 
there, give us a method that the God must create us, must create this and all that. But then, he's very sankalpa, it's all the same moment it comes, the question of uh, it is taking any time, one after another, there is no sequence at all. On this there has been a discussion, they have not but done it. Most of the people won't be able to digest such things. They expect, you know, they are, they are only, from their knowledge only have to proceed. So naturally, our Genesis, our Vedas are provided for it. But later on when you go, they have negated that also. So you know, those things are, we meant it for the common people, the people whose intellect is unable to rise up to the higher level. So we give them only that much of a truth. It is actually not a truth. So, the Upanishad says how these things were all done. It says, Akasha, Vayu, first he created the space and from the space the air came. Akasha, Vayu, Vayu, Agnihi. Then from the wind, the Agni or the fire came up. Agne Rapaham. From the Agni or the fire, then the water element came up. Adhyaprithivi. So when it is all water, which according to our scientists also, suddenly some portion developed, some portions came up from the ocean and it became Australia, it became the various continents and all that. So the Prithvi, the earth element came up. So that is why it came. So that reality, what did it do? Uppadya, having created. What did it create? Adyam. Adya means etc. etc. So he started with Akasha, then Akasha etc. Space etc. What is the etc? Space, fire, yeah, water. So all the other things came. So Adyam Uttpadya. Having created the five elements, the five gross elements, such as, such as Kham, such as Akasha, such as the space. So he created first all these things. Then having created, thus Khadyam Vishwam Uttpadya. He created these elements. Out of these elements, these were the basic elements which were reacting with each other, the entire, all the objects in the world came up, the entire world came up. The basic building blocks, out of which the world has been built up, or according to our uh, philosophies, are these five basic elements which were created by the Lord. So, Khadyam, Vishwam, Utpadya. Vishwam means the entire universe. Having created the universe, made up of the space, etc., all these elements, because they were the materials out of which the entire world was built up. And the universe is beautifully called Vishnu. And in the Vishnu Sarasanama, the very first name of the Lord is. Vishwam Vishnur Vashakkara Bhuta Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu Vishwam He is called the universe Because what is Vishwam? It comes from the word Vishil to enter Pravesh Nishe Pravesh So Vishil to enter So the one in which the Lord after having created He himself entered as the consciousness And who is able to activate them and make them function and that universe is called Vishwam. If you ask anybody in English, how the word universe came, they will say it's an arbitrary. Well, they can't tell any etymology. In the Sanskrit words, every word has got a philosophy behind it. Any ordinary word even has got a full philosophy behind it. So it has got an etymology, a beautiful etymology. And we have got a special kind of etymology for all the words in the Veda. So that is called one of the six angas, one of the six parts, the primary parts, without reading which one is denied entry into the world of scriptures. 
one has to go through them out of which that one is called Nirukta, Shiksha, Yakaranam, Chanda, Niruttam, Jyotisham, Kalpam. So these are all the six ones. First is Shiksha, the pronunciation. How to pronounce is important. Because the entire Vedas is a kind of sound. So the sound is wrongly pronounced instead of making it a brief. They are all got different capacities. They are creative as well as destructive. All the force is that. See, the force by itself, it is neither creative nor destructive, including the atomic energy. It, it reminds the way in which you put it to use. So if wrongly pronounced, it can create anything. To this extent, that is why, when the Vedas are going on, if a child weeps, they say, stop with us. Because if that sound is mixed up with the other sound, it can create a calamity for the entire environment. And similarly, it is told, unfortunately, today nobody heeds for all those things. Vedas can never be told along with any instrument. Oh, beautifully you do with the harmonium and say, Ganana, Andhra, Ganapati, Gamavami. It should not be told. If this instrumental music is added with it, it will create a catastrophe in the universe. These are all prohibited, unfortunately, but very few are aware of it. The sound is so pure, so pure, even a little inflection, downwards instead of upwards, can create heaven. So, so that is why this Vishwam Anupravishya, the Lord has created this world and he has entered into it. This looks like a grandmother's myth. He created the universe, he entered into it. How is it possible you are doing it every day? Every one of us is doing it every day and he is not aware of it. You are sleeping in a very small room, barely consisting of six into two, which just to contain so you can't even move. And you are having a beautiful dream that you are in East Africa, where you are in a wide jungle, you are with ten hunters, you find a herd of two hundred elephants has surrounded you, they are all trumpeting and making all threatening sounds. Now these ten people are caught, they are talking with each other in their gibberish, in their African language, and you alone are there, you don't know your muskets will be useless against it. Now, you have created a very big space, you have created a world of your own, and you have people with 100 elephants, with 20 hunters, so you created the world. Is it a dead world? No. Each item in your dream is active. The elephants are making threatening gestures and they are trumpeting loudly. That means they are all conscious. They are not unconscious, dead figures. And the twenty hunters with you, they are all talking, they are all uh, full of fear. And everyone is conscious. Where from that consciousness came? First, the bodies of all those people, the 2,000 elephants, where from you created? Where was the material for creating it? There were you, your thought force, your thoughts are not different from you. So out of your imagination, out of your thought force, you created so many figures. You created the 200 elephants. You created the hunters. The hunters are wearing various costumes. Where from the costumes came, you became their costumes. And some of the hunters are wearing some beads as a hara, as a mala. Where from they came, it is you. Because you are the only material available in that small room. So, you became all. You created, you have entered into them as the material cause as also as their consciousness, so you are all. You are activating them. 
you are making them all function because during the dream the entire thing looks as real as you and I now talking together. So that is how you are doing it daily. So we need not be uh, I mean, skeptical about accepting this that the Lord created and we entered into it. We are doing it daily. We are entering into all the world of dreams. We created the world and we have entered into all the dream figures and you are running it, the show, for half an hour, one hour, two hours. You are doing it daily. And the same thing. Kadya Mukvadya Vishwam Anupravishya Anupravishya Having entered into it all Both as a material cause And also as a consciousness behind it Without the consciousness it is dead Unless the consciousness manifested Is all dead universe What will you do with the dead universe? The universe is all active It is all full of life so when from that life came, it is that reality which has entered into it and gave life to that all. So Vishwamanu Pradishyan, then Gurudham Annamayadi Goshatu Shajale. When it has entered into it, then it should be visible. Out of gold, you have prepared a nice necklace of gold. When you see the necklace, you can clearly see the gold. The gold is not hidden itself. But unfortunately here, when on, in your dream when you have created so many elephants, was it evident to you that it is you who are acting as the elephants? Not at all. You are not aware. Because you are seeing your own duplicate who is upright and palpitating with all fear. So if you are aware that I am the elephant, then you would have been standing with all courage and fortitude, you would be afraid of that. So that shows it, you have been you are hiding, you are hidden in yourself into it, so it's not visible. In the same way after creating this entire world, the Lord has hidden himself deep into the pool of his creation. And it is called the Gudam. Gudam comes from the word Guha. Guha cave means something which is deep, where you cannot see what is inside. It is full of darkness. So that becomes in the past participle as Gudam. Gudamanu Pravishtam. Guham Pravishya Dishtantam. We are again and again telling about the Guha. There is a Hridaya Guha. He is inside. But then, Gudam. So, how do you say that it is hidden with what? I mean, have they put any coverings over him? What are the coverings? Yes. Anna maya di kosha dusha jale. He has got a lot of covers. What sort of covering? Now, you have kept rice. You have just brought it from the field. But it won't be in the form of rice. It is along with this hut. So, you are unable to see the rice inside. When you tell the child, look here, this is what I am giving you, daddy, it's a nonsense. How can it be? What are you giving is so white and golden, this has got a different color. It can't believe it, unless you remove the husk and show, here is that. So, tusha jale means, tusha means the husk. Jale means a collection, an assembly of husk. So, it is hidden amidst an assembly of all us. This is the grain inside it. We are assembly of us. So Tusha Jale, Jala means the assembly. Tusha means the husk. So what is that husk here? What type of husk? Anna Maya Dikosha. The five sheep. What are the sheets? These are imaginary concepts of identification. The one which we think that I am the, this is the Atman, this is myself, the body is myself, the mind is myself. So each one is covering, you are unable to go further, so each one is called a sheet. Just as you keep your food inside a scabbard, so which is called the sheet. 
So here there are five feet, one within the other. The first is the cross feet. It is, why are you not able to see the Lord? There are two reasons. Number one, your identification. And identification has collected a lot of muck, a lot of dust over it. So you have to remove it, purify your body. Purify your body by pure thoughts. Purify your body daily with mantras, daily taking bath, thinking of God. So these are all the methods of purification. Every day morning we do the purification. We take the water and then we say, whatever I did the yesterday night, let it all be washed off. We say every time, Manasa Bhata Sabhyam Bhagdham Vriyana Shishna Yadratya Papa Magarsham Ahattata Vahimpatu Whatever it is yesterday night, let the morning remove it. And then just taking with the God's name, the twelve names of the Lord in little of water, it has got the capacity to purify you to an unlimited extent. So these are all the techniques they are given us. So, Annamaya di Kosha Trusha Jale Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Buddha, then Vigyanamaya and the last is Anandamaya Kosha. So these are all the five scabbards. Now, you have to verify them, make them all transparent so that you can have your duty to be of the Lord. This is one method of talking. Or the other method is leave off each identification one by one. First, you apply all your logic, all your reasoning. Can I be the body? Can I be the body? Because what do you mean by Annamaya? The Annamaya consists of your karmendriya, your hand, your feet. So these are all the various organs of action. So you cannot be these organs of action due to various reasons. Number one, you say this is my body. You say, I say this is my book. So when I say my book, can I be the book? So book is my position. I am only a possessor. So when I say this is my body, I mean this body is my possession, but I am not the body at all. And number two, this body is subject to birth, death and the various changes. The shadvika, the six types of changes, that is growing, decaying, undergoing changes there is self due to old age and all that, then Janma, Marana. So like that there are six Vikaras, the six changes. So so it cannot be because all the books, all the experiences of sages who have gone there, experienced it, and we have had the good fortune of having the record of our experiences. They are unrecordable, they are inexplicable, but in spite of it, they are trying to do their best to make us understand a little of the experiences which they have had. These are not ordinary experiences, they are all transcendental experiences which can neither be caught by the Indriyas, by your senses, nor can be expressed to any of your senses. You cannot talk about it, you cannot think about it, but in spite of it, they have tried to give their level best to make us understand to some extent as to what lies in wait for us. So, thus you say that I cannot be the body, thus I is not the body. Then next you come to the prana. Then the prana, it is the bioforce which is inside. But you cannot be this prana or the bioforce or the vital breath because he says Vayu Vikaro Ganta Ganta See, this has been very beautifully enunciated. How to remove the identification of each? What sort of a logic we can apply? Yes, we can apply our own logic, but still you should know the particular method of approach, the modus operandi, and that is given 
is one of the most beautiful books of Shankara known as Vivekachudamana, which our Bhagavan has translated in Tamil. So this Vivekachudamani, um, I think in sloka number 167 onwards, in about six or seven slokas, it beautifully describes the various logic which you should apply for removing each identification progressively. Identification with the body, identification with the mind, identification with the prana, identification with the intellect. So it goes. I'm just giving you a, a, a short resume of it. So he says, how can the buy force? It cannot be the self because it goes and comes back. It goes as exhalation of the breath. It comes. It never remains stationary. And it is just as chanchala, as moving, uh, like the vayu, like the yak. So, and secondly, prana has no consciousness of its own. While we have been told that the self is all consciousness, is the supreme consciousness. So this is jada, this is insentient. It has no consciousness inside it. What is my consciousness again? It is not aware that it exists. Come to that. There is no I amness bhava in it. It doesn't know that I am. That's all. Then we have got the manamaya kosha. Well, I may be the mind. What is mind actually? Sankalpa vikalpa mana. It consists of kama, nichigitsa, shraddha, samshaya. They have explained what are all the qualities of a mind. The mind proposes various alternatives from time to time. We have got a week's vacation. We need to go to Uti. There are beautiful races going on. Or we need to come to Ramanashram. It is very nice. You can have uh, sadhana for five, six days. So like that it gives you the various alternatives. It also raises doubts in your mind. Which gets some. Then it raises desires on seeing something. I would like to possess it. I would like to have more money. I would like to possess this one. So like that, Kamaha. So these are all the qualities of the mind. The mind can never take a final decision. The mind will always give you the various alternatives and you will be always in the doldrums as to, I mean, which to choose, whether to choose this or choose that. So the mind is only a clerk which puts up the file with the various alternatives. That's all. So, the main thing is, Sushupti kale manasipralinam why can't this mind be that Atman? Atman is ever present. It can never be absent even for a second. In its lifetime it has never taken a vacation off. It is always present. While your mind simply disappears at the time of your sleep. When you are, when you are in your dream, the mind works. It is only the mind through which you are seeing everything. The entire dream, the entire drama of the dream. But in deep sleep, absolutely the mind is not there. If the mind is there, what will be the qualities? How do you know the mind is there? Number one, if the mind is there, you know, first is the I. I is the first thought. But during sleep, you are not aware. You are not aware about your body, about yourself. So, that is the main reason why this mana or the mind cannot be the atma. It cannot be the self. Now you come to the vijnana or the intellect. Even though the intellect and mind have been called separately by separate names, ultimately both are the same. It is just like the collector of Kurvandamala. He has been asked to look up to the seat of the sales tax commissioner as the sales tax commissioner has been relieved on plans work and his substitute has not come. So, when he sits in his office and deals with his file, he is called the collector. 
when on she goes for some three hours a day to the sales as commissioner's office and looks at the ghost files then he is called the sales as commissioner you can't call in the collector you can't see him in connection with those files he deals with different things over there similarly it is the same force which is called the mind which works at one level as the clerk at the other level as an officer who takes a decision the determinative faculty in you which takes the final decision which has got the discriminative faculty and that is called the buddhi that is called the intellect but then as i saw or said as is the same as the mind so whatever we have talked about the mind the same thing goes goes for the vijnana maya and vijnana maya's main quality is apart from anything apart from determining who determines i so the i comes the ego is one of the most important factor of this vijnana maya tools saying that i i do this i do this order so this i is the most important thing in the vijnana maya kosha so even with the removed everything else so long as the ego remains then your tada ka bhava your identification with the intellect continues to remain till you are able to eliminate the individual i merge yourself in the universal causation everything that happens to the universal will there is a universal causation individual has nothing to do he is only conscious of what is happening but unfortunately he begins to think it is i who did it and that causes all the problem when on your attributed the work to you then all the results of you the punyas and the papas the sins and the merits they accrue to you and consequently the punishments for the sins and the rewards for the good acts you do as reaction you can't help because every action has got the reaction but it goes to the actor if once you have got the problems i am not the actor they can't dare to come near you but so long as we continue to attribute the karta and the bhokta bhava that i am the one who experiences the pain i am the one who experiences the pleasure i am the one who did it so as the doer and the experiencer so long as you attribute it as gravity yourself well you have to have all the problems which are consequent of that you live them allow the universe to act as it likes don't identify yourself that catastrophe is come that anything come it is all part of it you could not avoid it they are all already take recorded they are all pre programmed uh, stories of shantananda of atubyar was pay of advani there is one cassette of each and that is what is unfolding itself and you can't do anything about it so now we come to Buddha anna maya di ko chatu shajale. So this tattva or this final reality is hidden inside the assembly of the various husks, known as the pancha kosha, the five sheep like anna maya, prana maya, vijnana maya. Then uh, I have not explained you about ananda maya. This is important. What is this ananda maya kosha? Ananda Maya Kosha, that she is. What happened is, it is only an identification with certain small pleasures. What happens when things of this world, which you like, the moment you hear about it, you get a pleasure. Oh, I have heard this gulab jamun is so nice. So that is what is called a kriya. I like it. So they have described the Ananda Maya Kosha as the entire Ananda Maya Kosha. They have described it as a bird, and a bird has got various parts. It has got its wings: the right wing, the left wing. It has got a head. It has got a body. It has got a small thing. So, in the allegory of this thing, it is described in our Taittiri Upanishad, a very beautiful about the Ananda Maya Kosha. He says, "Dasya priyame vasiraha." The moment.
when you begin to like something even by hearing of it so that first liking only by hearing it that is what is called the kriya there are various nuances there are various differences in the pleasures you get there is one pleasure when you hear about gulab jamun there is one pleasure when your son has brought the gulab jamun from the shop and kept it you are not even taking it because you are yet to do your puja but your eyes are on it and you get another pleasure when you put it in the mouth you get another pleasure when it goes so they are divided into priya moda pramoda and the last is ananda the ananda is the highest state tasya priyame vasera modo dakshina paksha pramoda uttara paksha so the left wing is called the pramoda when it has been brought to your house the other one is we are taking it you are putting it in your mouth almost and that is the pramoda that happens to be the other wing the two wings are there then finally the ananda before it comes the most important stabilizing factor for a bird if a bird is to fly under the laws of aerodynamics how does it fly because the balancing factor is the foot side that tail if the tail is not there it cannot take off so the most important substratum on which the entire aerodynamics of which uh, flying is built that happens with the pucha what is the pucha of this ananda where from this entire ananda comes this bliss comes it comes from the highest soul that supreme bliss who we call it as brahman brahma pucha pradeshta that is the substratum there is the important balancing factor known as the tail of the bird she is all done in a very beautiful way some of them when you should lick it see when i give her reading as pucham you are only being told ah the tail 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 we don't know what is the tail tail means we think of the monkey's tail so we are unable to link it as to what importance it plays but now that we know about the aircraft suddenly it stretches oh my lord is something very good that is the balancing factor it's the substratum so pratishta means the one on which it is based this is the very base that's how it comes so this is ananda may kosha and this ananda may kosha it uh, specially emphasizes itself only in the sleeping state in the waking state we are not aware in the waking state it comes as a small measure of joy which you get when you get something like a gulab jamun or a good music you like a cassette a very good music you like ah oh, it is so nice so these small pleasures that you get they are all coming out of that one but these are all ration to kota so where do you go with ration to kota when the entire reservoir is nearby cross it over go for it so we cross this also and during the sleep you do get almost the highest this you are very near it. that is why we don't want to lose a night's sleep for two days if you don't get sleep you go to the doctor ask for morbidrates ask for compost take two day free you can't remain because you know you want to enjoy the four months but unfortunately this is a brahmananda which is not pure it is mixed up with avidya with ignorance the darkness is there still the darkness is still there and naturally it never remains permanent the moment you get up that darkness the avidya comes in completely with a wind and it catches hold of you so all your brahmananda is gone suddenly in the morning you remember oh my lord today is the day when my creditor is to come i don't know what to do i can sell i have no got the money to pay my creditors so all your problems come one after another so the brahmananda doesn't last but the brahmananda should last it is perennial when on it comes it cannot die it cannot disappear we want that this so in this case what happens is all these five sheets with your discriminative faculty by applying the right logic and reasoning you try to contemplate meditate and get over the all remove all the sheets and then 
we would find inside that hidden tattva which is the most beautiful one, which is all consciousness, which is all bliss. So, kavayo vivitya yukti avadha tataha. Now, in the olden days, nowadays you have got all types of grinders and all that. So in the days when these books were written, we never had those grinders. So what you were used to do, we used to have a special equipment of uh, made up of either iron or uh, other things. We call it a pencil and the marker. So there used to be one U type uh, equipment with a small hollow. So you put the grain with its husk inside it and then two people together will take a long iron rod which is called the person but they will do that is called the avagata avagata means these beatings threshing out we call it threshing out of the beatings so only by beating it the husky will go the beautiful rice will come they will remove it and then we will use it for our food that is what we used to do so here also you have to thresh all these five sheets which are the various husks which are covering it. How do you do it? What is the vessel by which you can do it? The vessel here is yukti. Yukti means the various uh, techniques of right logic and reason. That is called the yukti. You think over, find out, why can I not be the body? Why can I not be the body? Why can I not be the intellect? Then what is the real self? Can it be the intellect? Then what is it? Who am I? Come to that. So this who am I comes only after eliminating all these things. I mean this is about the operation. There are several methods. Bhagavan's method is different. Anything. So in the method adopting the operation, before coming to who am I, you have to remove the husband. How do you remove the husband? Yukti avadhata taha by threshing it out with contemplation through right, uh, right logic and reason. Yukti means right logic and reason. Avadhata taha, the beatings, the threshing out. So by that means kavayaha vivichya. Vivichya means by separating the grain from the husk. Viveka, vivichya. Vivichya, who does it? The wise people. Kavayaha. The really wise people who have got that discriminative faculty, who really want to know who they are, who are not prepared to be intoxicated with the worldly pleasures and its uh, sorrows. We like the sorrows as well as the, it is just like a yeah, man who has got some um, so itching problem. You know pretty well by itching it further, the blood will come out. And then tomorrow I'll have to go for bigger ointments and all them go and eat for 15 days. In Friday at that time you get a beautiful pleasure like playing the violin. So you can't help it. See that is there. So similarly in this world you know pretty well that there are problems. In spite of it willingly we enter into it and then shout that I am God, I am God, I am God. It is you who entered into it knowing it. So, Abhayo vivitya yukti avadha kataha.